within our reach. Ten questions posed from round the world to the Rainbow Mantle. Some emails in from some various people around the world. Yeah, all over the world. Yeah. This first question on the card here is uh, one we get asked regularly by so many people. Oh, tell me about it. I'm sick of these questions. This is from a uh, Mr. Carl Perkins and a few others. What is the deal with our noses? Well, I can tell you, Carl. We are uh, mandrel monkeys, and our, our noses are actually life-size and actual to the point. Yes. Yes. Yes, they are. I'm not having a nose job for nobody. It's I am who I am. Question on my card is from a Mr. John Mortimer, and he says, uh, "As at the Rainbow Mandrels, we talk about a lot of things that uh, are peculiar to him." What is this hundredth monkey you keep talking about? Well, well, yes, yes, Jonathan. There's a little theory on the cosmic shift happens when you reach a critical mass, and it has been called the hundredth monkey effect. Let me tell you about this. In 1952, on the island of Kushima, Japan. Japanese scientists providing monkeys with sweet potatoes that were thrown in the sand. The monkeys liked the taste of the raw sweet potatoes, but found the dirt unpleasant. That's until an 18-month-old female named Amu found that she could solve the problem by washing the potatoes in the salty ocean water, improving the taste of the potato. She taught this trick to her mother. Soon after, her playmates learned this and taught their mothers too. This cultural innovation was gradually picked up by numerous monkeys in the troop and observed by the scientist. In the autumn of 1958, something startling took place. A large number of snow monkeys were washing their sweet potatoes. The exact number was not known. The hypothetical number given was 99. And then it happened. The hundredth monkey learned to wash their sweet potato. This added energy of the hundredth monkey somehow created a conscious breakthrough. Almost everyone in the troop was washing their potatoes before eating them. But surprising, the habit of washing sweet potatoes had jumped overseas. Colonies of monkeys on other islands and the main island troop began washing their potatoes. Throughout the exact number may vary, this hundredth monkey phenomenon means that only when a limited number of individuals knows a new way, it remains the conscious property of those individuals. However, when one or more individuals manifest this new awareness, the field is strengthened, a critical mass is reached, and the awareness becomes the conscious property of all. Conscious Awareness The conscious aspect of the mind involving our relationship with the world and self in relationship to it. When we shift our awareness of frequency from self-consciousness where fear, impossibility, or feelings of separation reside, cosmic consciousness, which is the total harmony with the universe and where none of these feelings exist. Set a conscious intention of love and peace, connect this intent to Earth and God to a illuminate the new beginning of Earth's spiritual evolution, which is already underway. You can hear all about the hundredth monkey in the upcoming song called Cosmic Leaning Dreamers. The next question is for me, Mr. Bendy Cock from Amsterdam. He asks, what is an obelisk and dome? Well, I 
as you can see from our shirts, I am a dome, and he is an obelisk. Actually, I am an obelisk. <laughs> it, it is a, a thing that is representative of men and women coming together in union and harmony. And not in just a romantic way, but also a brothers and sisters. It's time to get ourselves together. We work better as a unit. We really do. Yes, we really do, sweetheart. We really do. Yay. This question is for me. Miss Marshmallow. And she asks you, MP, what is your lovely rainbow for? Well, my rainbow represents the sh all the chakras lit up at the same time. Because I'm a very cosmic monkey, you know. And uh, let me explain to you now what a chakra system is and the Kundalini effect, which can be seen in the song Obelisk. Everything that is thought of by the eternal conscious mind of the multiverse bursts into manifestation by the vibration of swirling energy. From the giganticism of a spiral galaxy like Andromeda with its one trillion stars to a grain of sand with its approximately 780 million trillion atoms inside each grain to the subatomic nucleus of those very atoms. If it appears to be solid and of substance, it is vibrating with energy in wheels of light. First thing to comprehend is what is solid only appears to be solid, for as we know, energy and atomic particles are far from solid. So, the term Kundalini comes from the Sanskrit words meaning sacred force of coiled energy. It is a stream of energy to connect us to the cosmic energy and represents the dynamic forces that are thought to move through the entire multiverse. It is represented as a coiled snake at the base of the spine that looks very similar to the pictures of DNA. It has been held sacred for millennia of generations of the Eastern cultures, represented by the goddess Kundalini Shakti, being the personification of the divine feminine creative power. The term Kundalini Awakening talks about the experience of awakening all of the seven major chakras of the body, which is like a rainbow bridge of information passing through us to the multiverse and connecting us with our higher selves. Coincidentally, it is perceived as a rainbow coming out of the crown of your head. Look at my beautiful rainbow colors surrounding my crown chakra. The word chakra again comes from the Sanskrit word meaning wheels of light. They are perceived as seven main vortexes of energy in the body. They are from top to bottom, the base chakra, called the muladhara. It means root support. It is symbolized by the color red. This chakra is located at the base of your spine. Muladhara keeps you locked in the natural world giving instinct, security, survival, and everything a person needs for the Earth. It keeps us in our five sense reality. If you are alive, it is awake. We go up the body and up the evolution of soul power to the second chakra, called Spodhisthana, meaning one's own place. It is located in the hips and pelvis area associated with the color orange. This is the obelisk and dome chakra, if you will, awakened by passion, burning desire, bringing an ocean of bliss in oneness between the opposites coming together as one. The burning loins of desire tap into our primal longings and desires. Let's travel up further through the cosmic awakening evolution. The third chakra, called Manipura, meaning lustrous gem. This is located in the solar plexus, associated with the color yellow. 
this chakra is starting to put you in a frame of existence to go from the simplistic desires of the first two chakras to more complex matters. This chakra, if awakened in beautiful harmony, gives you determination, power in your own hands. If undernourished, it leads to feelings of self-worthlessness. Overuse with no heart chakra opened can lead to aggressiveness. This one you really need to learn to have harmony, yin-yang. It is almost to be considered as the base point for your own personal growth, the fire in the belly. We travel up further to the fourth chakra, anahata, meaning unhurt, the heart chakra, represented by the color green. We are really getting into it here. This is the home of unconditional love, a love that is a lot different from the desire of the first two chakras. It is where you start connecting to the infinite us. It is not in love, for in love can be out of love just as easy as it came. The heart chakra just is love. Think with your heart, for it is wiser than your mind comes from this place of being. The true meaning of love yourself, love for the world. Let's go even further. The fifth chakra, Vishuddha, meaning purification, the throat chakra. The color is blue. With this chakra awakened, you really start getting a secure feeling of multiversal awareness. You start knowing your true self and capabilities. Sing for joy in the harmonic music of cosmic consciousness love. We move on even further to the sixth chakra, Ajna, meaning to perceive, the brow chakra, the third eye chakra, represented by violet and purple, as in purple haze or through my brain. Lately things just don't seem the same. Jimmy, an enlightened soul as ever. It starts dealing with the true third eye insight, almost cracking the code of the five sense matrix of reality, seeing the other dimensions of infinite possibility, full of imagination, wonder, insight, and full potential power. And up to the big one, the seventh chakra, called Sahasra, meaning thousandfold, the crown chakra, coming from the top of your head. Sahasra really takes you to the place of being in this world of ours called Earth and the universe, but knowing you are not of this universe of taste, touch, smell, sight and sound. You know you are infinite love of any possibility, of anything you can imagine and anything you cannot imagine. It is the chakra of pure consciousness, as the enlightened ancients would depict it as the energy force of us, being the goddess Kundalini Shakti bursting out of us to join the god Shiva, represented as everything and all, the multiverse of everything and all, and joining in beautiful harmonic union of bliss. This energy force is not a few miles left of the Andromeda galaxy or on the edge of the universe. As hard as it is to comprehend the vastness of the universe, of its multi-trillions of galaxies perceived, the universe itself is but just one small part of the multiverse. The vastness of the universe is still just in our five sense realm. The places as represented by the god Shiva, or any dogma religion god, and the source of everything in the multiverse is not detectable in our realm, but everything in our realm slash universe is the cause and effect of the infinite energy of the multiverse. There we go, the Kundalini energy expressed in nine minutes. <laughs>